All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is let's set up a futures strategy. So again, the first thing you wanna do is create a webhook. So we'll call it futures webhook and let's change it to futures and let's click save. And you'll, you'll notice I'm making a mistake. When I click save, we're gonna get an error because square is not a valid futures ticker. So let's change that to be NQ. All right, let me save it now. So now we have this futures webhook. Let's create a new strategy associated to that futures webhook. We'll call this the futures strategy and we'll associate it to the futures webhook. And we're going to take both sides, both bullish and bearish. Let's default it to NQ. And again, this is a future strategy. So instead of choosing stocks, let's choose futures. And instead of doing a percent of portfolio value, let's just hard code it so it'll buy a quantity of one. And let's enter market and exit market. All right. And now that we have that strategy created, now we can create a subscription for that strategy in order to connect it to our broker. So click create a subscription and let's connect it to the TradeStation Futures uh, broker. Now the futures market markets are still open right now. They're open for another 28 minutes. Um, so let's auto submit. I uh, defaulted the settings of the strategy subscription to the settings that I defined in the strategy. We're taking both sides. It defaulted to NQ. It's associated to my trade station, futures, paper broker. The asset class is futures. It's hard coded to a quantity of one. And we're entering entry market and exit market. And you see here the it's buying one contract of the, the current NQ contract. Now, if I were to change this to two and click save, you're gonna notice that the quantity here is gonna update. And again, what I showed before, we have the bullish and bearish example. That's because we have sides both chosen. So if I were to change this to bearish only, then the entry order is gonna be a sell short order. If I change this to be bullish only, it's gonna be a buy order. So let's do both and let's change this back to a quantity of one. And when you change sides to both, you get this little switcher here that allows you to preview the orders for both bullish and for bearish. So you can see what it would look like. Now, just to show you what this looks like, say you wanted to have a 10% take profit and a 2% stop loss. Click save. And now this preview order shows you what that looks like. So for a bearish example, it's gonna sell short and the take profit and the stop losses are buy to covers. And now if I switch to the bullish example, it will be the reverse. So it's a buy and this is just a regular sell to close. This is the take profit and this is the stop loss. All right, so let's, let's remove this and I'm gonna come back later. I'm gonna show you, re-add it and show you what it looks like. So we'll click save and now the example orders no longer have that take profit and stop loss. So we're gonna enable the strategy subscription now. Everything looks good. So let's go back to our webhook click view and then click send request and let's send a buy order for NQ. All right, the trade was auto submitted. Let's go to, up to our notifications. We'll see now that we had that buy for NQ. It was submitted to TradeStation. Let's just click view here. So you can see the API call that we made to TradeStation. We can click that to view it. So you can see that we made a API request to the orders endpoint. This was the data we sent, and this is what they responded with. So we did a market buy for NQ, and it gave us an order ID, and it basically said that that order was accepted successfully. So now if we go back to the TradeStation Futures broker, you'll see now that we have an open position. Now, um, 
Let's go back to the webhook and let's send another request. But actually, before I do that, I'm going to turn off auto submit. Go back to the webhook and let's do a send request and let's do a sell. Now, because I turned off auto submit, it's, it's not going to submit it automatically to the broker. All right, so the trade is created. Let's go to our notifications over here. And you'll see that we have this new trade and it wasn't submitted to the broker automatically like these were because we turned off auto submit. So this is kind of useful to just see and the reason why, why I turned off auto submit so as you can see what, it, what the trade is going to do. Because we have an open position, again, I'm going to go back. We have an open long position. And you'll see that we have this pending trade that hasn't been submitted to the broker. You can click back to view that trade. And we can see that it's calculated that because there's an open long position, we need to exit that position. So that's going to be a market sell. And then as soon as that exit order is filled, then it's going to immediately enter a short position. And this is the signal that triggered that trade. There's a little shortcut to click view log to get back to the page that shows after you send a webhook request. And then you can get back to the trade by clicking view trade. And again, we, we like I mentioned before, we try to put a debug button. This is basically uh, to give you kind of an, an idea of what happens on the back end of traders post when we receive a signal is the first thing that we do is effectively plan that trade. And in order to plan that trade, we have to make a few API calls to the broker to find out if there are open orders for that, that ticker, is there an open position? And then it calculates the exit order that we're gonna send and then calculates an entry order. So this is basically just the, the raw low level debug data um, that the traders post staff will use, but it's also potentially useful for you to kind of get an idea of what traders post is doing underneath the hood. And the data that you see here in the debug is essentially the same data that's powering this user interface here. You can see that there were no open orders to cancel. The open position on NQ is gonna be exited and we're gonna open a new position on NQ. So like I said before, if you wanted to reject this trade, you could click reject. And now that trade is rejected, but say I change my mind, I can click retry. And now I have the ability to approve that trade. And now it's gonna send it to the broker. And the uh, you see now that there are two rows here under broker logs because we had to make two API calls, one to exit this position. And then as soon as that uh, order fills, then it immediately sends the order to the broker to enter the new position. So this first API call um, is the exit. So it's a market sell, go back to the trade. Then the second API call is a second sell to basically enter a new position. Um, and you'll notice here that there's always this view trade button on the broker log screen. If that log was triggered by a trade, um, you, you'll have that convenient view trade button in order to get back to this screen here. All right, so now if I go back to the unified broker user interface, you'll see now that we have a short position open on NQ. So Again, like I mentioned, if you wanted to manually close that position and you didn't want to wait for the strategy to send the exit signal, you could manually exit that position from within the Traders Post Broker UI. Excuse me. You could also exit it manually from the broker directly. So if you had TD Ameritrade or Thinkorswim or the Trade Station app on your phone, you could close that position manually. And that position be being closed would be reflected in Traders Post as well, because we are communicating to the API of the broker in real time. So we know live when there are open positions or there are not open positions. So because I closed that position manually, you'll see that this order right here was sent. Uh, we can click view order 
and we see the details of the order. Um, if you go to connected brokers and click logs, so this was a futures under the trade station futures broker, we'll click logs and you can see a history of all the API calls that we've made. So this API call was the last one that we just made. And you can see the difference between uh, the other API calls and the broker logs is that this one was created by a user. So if I go back to the logs and click this one, which was created by a trade, you'll see that it was created by the future strategy. And we have that view trade button. So this is useful to just kind of help you see like what made this API call to the broker? Was it me manually making the, uh, was it me manually placing an order or was it created by a automated trading strategy? So if you click future strategy, that'll take you to the trade that triggered that, that broker log. All right. Uh -huh.